This is the Power Break Podcast number 051, an interview with Roger Neal, a neuromuscular therapist. Hi, I'm your host, Bob Brubaker, inviting you to stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. The Power Break Podcast is a twice-weekly show that provides a discussion of biblical principles applied to daily life and an interview show featuring stories of perseverance to help you keep pressing on. Today we're talking with Roger Neal, a noted neuromuscular therapist. Today's interview took place at Roger's office of Bay Area Therapy. Let's go to the interview. Welcome this afternoon. Uh, we're talking to Roger Neal, who is a neuromuscular therapist, and happens to be my neuromuscular therapist, and so I'm very thankful to, he's in my life and he uh, does a great job, so I thought I would interview him and hear about the very fact that he's been doing this for, did you say, 37 years, Roger? 37 years, Bob. Mercy's sake, how does a person survive 37 years in the same profession, and I guess it's because you help people. Well, it's uh, probably a combination of uh, definitely drive to help people uh, as well as uh, it uh, seemed to fit um, what uh, I wanted to do in life and uh, work towards in helping people. In fact, it didn't really start out that way. Uh, I started uh, in college as an astronomy major with a minor in physics and but I went to massage school to learn a trade so that I could work myself through college. And I had such an aptitude for uh, doing the work, and I seemed to have some innate skills that uh, it uh, then propelled me forward into actually a a career, uh, which uh, I still enjoy the astronomy and the physics, but... Uh, and the physics has definitely helped me in my uh, understanding of mechanics and how the body works in some in some fashion. Um, so, um, but with a background in science and learning more anatomy and physiology, it just uh, really kindled my interest in um, working more towards understanding the body and how to uh, help assist the body in its healing mechanisms. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you are, because you are a massage therapist, but you're a neuromuscular therapist. How does that differ? Well, that, that is correct. Um, uh, I am a licensed massage therapist, um, licensed in 1983. Um, and uh, most people, even today, who go through massage school uh, go through a basic platform of education, of uh, anatomy and physiology, massage techniques, learning how to apply um, therapy to the human body um, and to help it uh, with specific types of protocols. Neuromuscular therapy uh, actually is uh, another add-on to regular massage therapy. So most people think of massage which is true as a relaxation type of therapy, uh, which is very therapeutic for the body, whereas neuromuscular is working more towards uh, reducing um, function um, uh, problems, uh, symptoms related to pain, uh, inflammation, certain types of injuries um, or, and when I say injuries, I can even uh, relate to repetitive uh, strain type of injuries uh, so that it helps to break down uh, those problems uh, or patterns uh, that seem to be an eight with certain uh, traumas or injuries per se. Mm-hmm. So it's a little bit uh, delving deeper into uh, the muscles, looking at what we call trigger points, uh, trigger points that form, which are hyper irritated uh, areas in the body, shortening or contractions of the muscle, and how to free that to open up uh, that muscle so that it can be restored to a normal function. Uh, so that it's um, less painful and less irritable. 
So you start out as a massage therapist and start, then you increase to neuromuscular therapy. That's correct. It was a additional schooling, training, um, which uh, I went for um, uh, many classes actually for certification for that. And um, so I'd already been a uh, licensed massage therapist for about two years uh, when I really started looking more into the rehabilitation side or as I call it, medical massage, mm -hmm. um, in addressing uh, those dysfunctions or patterns, like I'd mentioned, for athletes uh, and for people who've had traumas, um, auto accidents, uh, slip and fall injuries, uh, and or, again, repetitive stress injuries. Okay. Uh, you've added on other techniques as well over the years, I know. Well, or, uh, you know, um, I like to think that uh, I grow with the times and technology. Okay. Uh, I uh, understand the importance of keeping up on um, uh, other modalities, uh, being exposed to them. For example, um, recently I've added to my repertoire of modalities a uh, needless type of acupuncture uh, in which we use micropulse stem uh, to affect acupuncture points um, with, uh, without a needle. Hmm. And uh, so by putting in a microcurrent into those known acupuncture sites, it uh, has very much similar effect to what acupuncture um, pra practitioners um, are able to do. Okay, and you have also added the uh, laser therapy too. Laser therapy, uh, we've been working with for um, a little over uh, 10 years at this point. Um, I was one of the uh, initial therapists in Pinellas County uh, that uh, got to establish um, with... Um, sorry. That's all right. You know, a lot of times I, I record these in, in uh, restaurants and we just... We go with the flow. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so here we are with the flow, and I, and I and, and you know that's kind of my philosophy too, Bob. Is go with the flow, and uh, and go with the grain, as yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah. So the um, Missouri boy will knows what that it's about. Right? Uh, yeah, that's right. And uh, I, I've had my time on the farm, so it was uh, I, I I know about those things. So you're 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 involved with the laser therapy. You're involved with the uh, uh, micropulse stem laser therapy is um, a very very interesting technology. Uh, it's um, a unique modality that works with uh, photonic light, uh, and um, laser enables us to reach deeper into the human body and apply light to substrate or muscles, tendons, ligaments, discs, um, and that uh, actually it helps immensely for the body to, its own self mechanisms to heal. And it does that um, very readily by, um, in all of our human cells, which there's approximately 75 trillion cells in our bodies, um, more stars than we can actually that are in the sky above that we know of. And so if you can imagine um, that many cells and, with, and within each cell uh, are little molecules called chromophores. And just as our skin uh, has abundant chromophores within our skin cells, and we know that that absorbs light and, uh, and it has uh, actual benefit uh, because of melanin production that stimulated serotonin uh, for the brain, vitamin D for the body. But what we also know is that below the skin and all the soft tissue contains these chromophores. And if you can deliver uh, light or little packets of photons to the cells, these little chromophores will actually uh, bind themselves with that photon uh, which is like a little energy packet. And then that is actually converted at the cellular level to uh, through the mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell. Um, that actually stimulates the substance ATP or adenosine triphosphate, 
which is really what our cells use for energy. Mm -hmm. I aken it to uh, the similarity of if we pump crude oil out of the ground, we can't just put that barrel of crude into our gas tank. It has to be converted and changed yeah, yeah. into a substance that our engines can use. And really when we eat, uh, and really no matter what it is, eventually uh, well over 90% of that uh, eventually becomes adenosine triphosphate. Or ATP. Or ATP. There you go. Roger, let's talk a little bit about your business. Now, you started out as a massage therapist. I, I reckon you were working for somebody else, or were you always self-employed? Well, no, I haven't always been self-employed. Um, my uh, very first um, uh, employer was the Safety Harbor Spa in Safety Harbor hmm. um, here in Florida. And um, that was my induction into... Uh, the massage world professionally as a licensed therapist and um, uh, within a couple of years I as I had said before I developed more of an interest in looking at dysfunctions traumas pain inflammatory problems and what's the root of that and how do you diminish that for me as a non-physician uh, you know drug-free non-surgical um, how, how can I help restore the body and give it benefit uh, without interaction of those drugs or surgeries? So for me, it was a quest to learn those modalities uh, that would be the most beneficial in helping the body to heal. So uh, after a couple of years of being a licensed massage therapist and starting to develop uh, that interest, um, I uh, actually uh, was had a lease space at the YMCA in Clearwater, uh, which I did for five years, and that gave me exposure to a lot of athletes and a lot of athletic problems. Um, you know, everything from simple sprains and strains to plantar fasciitis, um, um, problems with uh, shoulders, um, tears, uh, sprains, strains. Uh, neck pain, you know, these guys playing racquetball, all these weekend warriors, or the guys that were serious into weightlifting and doing triathlons and biking and running, much like yourself, Bob. And uh, so figuring out when people came to me with these issues, how do I help restore them in a natural manner? What mechanisms do I, uh, do I have uh, that I can apply uh, that would uh, boost that healing mechanism forward because I really tell my patients uh, as practitioners we we do not heal anything the human body heals itself all of the tools the what's necessary is inside of each of us it's just I'm a catalyst to help push that those mechanisms forward faster mm -hmm. so that um, healing times are diminished. Um, you know, we talked about the laser, for example. One of the interesting um, uh, efficacies of that is for fracture. So uh, we treat uh, post-fracture here at the clinic, and we know that uh, uh, using laser therapy over those fractures reduces the fracture healing time. By approximately 40 percent so those people who are extremely active that want to get back into their athletic endeavors uh, and perhaps they have a fracture of this or that uh, we can actually speed that along so that they're off their bike less or off the running trail less mm -hmm. and get back to what they enjoy let's go back to when you started the, your, your own clinic then How, so what year was that um, I actually started my uh, Bay Area Neuromuscular Therapy Center. Um, I incorporated that in 1989, and um, that's when I had moved out from the YMCA and um, uh, was in the public arena and had uh, leased um, a facility and began that. And so that was properly in 1989. And... Um, I developed an interest in oncology or cancer patients um, 
uh, as well in looking at the effects of, of not just the social dynamic of what the person's going through, but actually uh, what happens after cancer surgery to remove lymph nodes, to um, do uh, mastectomies, um, uh, which leaves um, what's, what effect could I help post-radiation therapies. Mm -hmm. And so um, taking several classes and um, uh, what we call CEs or continuing education, um, uh, I developed um, more tools uh, and became associated with Likes Cancer Center at Morton Plant Hospital and uh, begun to know the staff there. And then that led within a couple of years to an opportunity to start um, a massage program at Morton Plant Hospital uh, in 1992. And at that time, it was um, the only hospital-based massage program um, in this area. <clears throat> there were a few others around the country uh, through that, um, uh, I was able to uh, help integrate massage therapies with outpatient physical therapy, uh, rehabilitation, and work with uh, other physicians, clinicians, uh, therapists um, uh, at different levels of uh, back programs, um, sitting in and uh, discussing uh, with the uh, other uh, professionals that were there, actual cases and how to help those patients. And then that sh led to uh, uh, an affiliation uh, through um, CE credentialing uh, with teaching uh, for Sloan Kettering uh, for New York for their oncology nursing program and teaching um, nurses medical massage interventions uh, for their patients, um, as well as teaching contraindications or when it was not appropriate to apply hands-on therapies. Um, so uh, then that led on to another advent of working um, with uh, a group of neurologists here in Clearwater um, after um, uh, successfully starting the massage program at Morton Plant. Uh, and I had my own practice at that time and had other uh, therapists, other um, professions, acupuncturists, uh, osteopathic physician working within my clinic. Um, then I had an opportunity to work with a group of neurology uh, physicians here in Clearwater uh, as a group and was able to actually head up their therapy department for five years. Uh, alongside uh, my own practice. And so I had uh, uh, begun my education quest then on the neurologic front of trauma wow. and uh, <laughs> m medical issues. And, um, uh, and again, learning from my point of view what I could do to apply drug-free, non-surgical solutions for these neurologic traumas. And um, from everything from strokes, CVAs, um, to again whiplashes, uh, sciatic nerve problems, uh, herniated disc problems that encroach uh, spinal nerves. Um, uh, so I got to learn a lot of strategy, apply my knowledge, and then grow within that time frame. And of course, work with some uh, top. Um, physicians here in the area uh, for, for neurology. And uh, so that was, that was fun. And uh, after five years, the, uh, the doctors disbanded. And so that ended my contract with them at that time. But then I got a call from um, uh, one of my patrons, one of my patients, um, that uh, was uh, majorly involved with Morton Plant Hospital and I ended up uh, helping to set up a massage program for cancer patient support services groups at uh, Morton Plant Hospital and uh, delivering uh, therapies, again, to oncology patients. But we expanded that program out to the caregivers as well because we tend to forget 
in life when we have a loved one, a spouse, a friend, sister, brother going through the cancer process that it's really uh, quite encumbering on the caretaker as well. And um, so there's uh, stress, anxiety issues that can accompany that because cancer is not just here and gone in a day. It's a process. And as people go through processes, um, uh, so do their caregivers. Yeah. So, um, so we, uh, I, I was able to help to expand that program um, to, uh, to include the uh, cancer physicians and, uh, and the counselors at Morton Plant Hospital. And um, that um, uh, I, I uh, directed for about 10 years through the hospital and, uh, and it's still alive today. Um, which I'm happy to know. Well, that's good. That's a good story. So, uh, so then that uh, presently brings me, um, and then over the years, I've uh, always, again, been looking for um, other techniques, technology, uh, things that I can bring to the table, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, so that I can help and assist my patients. And um, I've been blessed to be able to be healthy uh, enough to endeavor uh, for so many years, um, uh, not just taking care of my own body uh, to a good extent, but um, most massage therapists that work full-time in the industry, the average industry uh, um, full-time is uh, about 10 years. And simply because of the labor in, uh, that's involved in using your hands, your joints, um, uh, and the repetitive stress that, as a professional, we endure uh, in order to deliver those therapies to patients. As you're helping others, you put yourself in jeopardy. Well, uh, it's true. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's not, I'm not the only profession in that regard. Um, but that is true, and uh, um, so it's. Uh, but it's been uh, it's been a, quite a journey. I've uh, um, enjoyed it immensely. Um, people ask if I ever get bored, and I I really don't, because uh, even though people can have a similar condition, each person is unique, and that. Uh, uh, things can differ a little bit, so uh, as far as who that person is, what their makeup is, uh, what environment uh, they live in, uh, what do they do or don't do for themselves. So everybody's so different that even though somebody can come in here with something like plantar fasciitis that is the bottom of the foot, it's an mm -hmm. inflammation, uh, that um, everybody's a little bit different in how they heal how they, um, um, I guess, just dynamically uh, go through rehab, and that keeps me interested. So your key to persevering is what? I would have to say that the key to persevering um, is liking what I do and uh, as a main component and uh, feeling the enjoyment of helping others. Um, I, I tend to work long days, hard days. Uh, I still put those, that time in, but I feel a lot of joy at the end of my day um, and looking back over my day that I've helped this person or that person um, uh, either in reducing some pain complaint or making a suggestion of lifestyle change that perhaps they hadn't thought of. Um, I uh, just, just real quickly, I have a retired rear admiral out of the Navy that I'm working with um, uh, that has had a lot of edema in his lower extremities, and I really got him to understand the importance of hydration. And just that one little change 
in fact I saw him this afternoon has made a lot of difference in his healing and his being able to uh, evacuate that fluid that uh, so many other physicians or practitioners just kind of looked at and threw up their hands and said well there's nothing wrong with your heart there's nothing wrong with the other systems we don't know oh, wow. but um, but this that one little change in his life has already uh, made a marked change in how he's feeling and uh, also the fact that he's dropped a few pounds and he's enjoying that so yeah. so if I can be a messenger um, and just uh, you know I look at it like uh, throwing the pebble into the pond uh, you never know where the ripple's going to land and how it's going to affect someone. And so I put my best forward each and every day and knowing that I can be that pebble and affect not just the patient that may be in front of me, but also perhaps their friend, loved one, family, that then they could make that suggestion to as well. So... We never know where our ripples will land, Bob. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it. Uh, Roger, now, uh, before we go, uh, let's talk about your recent expansion. Uh, Bay Area ne Neuromuscular is kind of expanding. Uh, what are you calling it now? Well, uh, we are still Bay Area Neuromuscular Therapy, uh, but we're also adding regenerative medicine. Um, we're, we're expanding um, with... Um, uh, becoming a physician's practice, uh, not that I am becoming the physician. Um, I'm, I've been at this too long to go back to school, and nor would I want to start over again, but um, we're adding on uh, uh, other practitioners. Uh, we've recently restarted, or I've restarted physical therapy here at my office. <clears throat> uh, we're recredentialing uh, under uh, our Medicare and uh, other insurances so that uh, we will be seen as a physician practice um, and so we're going to um, uh, and I'll be having a nurse practitioner joining my practice in about two weeks and we're going to look forward uh, into regenerative medicine which is um, things like uh, PRP plasma rich platelets uh, for <clears throat> excuse me uh, injection uh, for instance, we can take some of your blood, Bob, spin it down, harvest out uh, the rich plasma out of that blood, which has um, stem cells in it, and re-inject that into uh, a torn tendon, a torn mm -hmm. ligament, uh, and or something uh, joint-wise that uh, has stayed inflamed, doesn't seem to be receptive to healing, but yet we know that um, with the science, it, uh, it's an up-and-coming field. Uh, and then we'll, we will be uh, also offering stem cells um, and uh, doing what we call the osteoarthritic knee protocols um, for uh, cartilage, which has been desiccated or broken down uh, over time. And there are ways to help regenerate that mm -hmm. um, that, again, uh, are basically drug-free um, and non-surgical um, that does help to regenerate those tissues. So we're expanding into that um, uh, area and uh, other areas. Um, I've just a re acquired uh, my uh, second uh, piece of technology um, that we call the Neuromed. It's electroanalgesic medicine uh, to where we can give patients an option from having uh, epidural steroidal injections uh, to where we can do those nerve blocks from the surface without any injection and or medication that has bad side effects to it. Um, and also uh, that goes along with our neuropathy protocols and using combinations of these therapies uh, to help restore um, these uh, cells that uh, have become deficient because of diseases like um, diabetes mm, yeah. um, and other factors. 
Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm very excited. And so we've opened up a second office in Safety Harbor, Florida. And uh, we have already started seeing patients there. And uh, we're very shortly, we're going to be expanding into this, regenerate, uh, um, into this field of medicine, um, regenerative medicine. Uh, and I'm very excited about being able to present that um, with the knowledge uh, and other practitioners that I have with me who have a similar philosophy in working with patients and delivering these therapies that are fairly non-invasive and um, that actually work to help the human body to heal. So it's all this quest that you have of trying to be um, something to help people. Yes, that's the bottom line. Um, I, I, it's like I've told you before, uh, uh, as, as a patient, you're my boss. And uh, my job is to uh, not see you. And uh, which means one of two things, either you fired me because I didn't do my job well, or B, because I've done it well enough that I don't need to see you. I've graduated a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> well, Roger, it's been a pleasure to have you on our podcast today. I, I appreciate it very much. And uh, I'll put in our show notes ways to contact you because you do have a website. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. It's uh, uh, bayarianeuromuscular.com. Okay. And uh, be happy. Uh, thank you, Bob. Uh, appreciate that. And because uh, as our patients graduate, we need more people to come in behind them and so that we can uh, help them as well. I don't think you ever lack for patients. It seems to be that uh, you always have, uh, I think your reputation has preceded you. And so as, as the word gets out about uh, Bay Area neuro- Neuromuscular, they, they know that Roger Neal will help them feel better. I always put my best foot forward, Bob. (laughs) Thank you, Roger. And thank you for having me, Bob. It's been a pleasure. This has been the Power Break Podcast with another story of perseverance to encourage you to keep pressing on in the race of life. If you would like more information about Roger Neal and what he does at his office, you may look online at bayareaneuromuscular.com. You'll find the link in today's show notes. Today's show is number 051. The Power Break Podcast is a twice-weekly show that provides a discussion with JT and myself on biblical principles to help you succeed in the race of life, and an interview show with stories of perseverance. Please subscribe wherever you have downloaded the podcast, and please leave us a rating and a review. Well, check out today's show notes, books, the Power Break blog, and more at my website, bobbrewbaker.com, and listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.